man. Got it around. <laughs> OT7 back here. And today, guys, I wanted to um, get straight into the topic of the video. Um, there's no victory or glory yet because I'm only at like, uh, you know, I'm actually at like 40% recovered from the macaroni. <laughs> and this is actually my, uh, let's see, let me see actually. This will be my fifth day just actually being able to sit up and to, you know, ambulate or walk around my apartment, dude. I mean, my condo. So, uh, you know, I haven't been able to work out, dude, none of that stuff. And, uh, you know, I got my agent calling me for movies and I got um, the fight scene place calling me to do stuff. But I got to take it easy because I don't want to. I remember one time I had the flu. No, I had pneumonia and the flu. And uh, I had recovered, and I was such a hurry. I like to be in shape, and I like to be able to defend myself. I like to be able to uh, just feel like my body's a weapon, you know? And that's just part of my self-identity, my ego ed. So I got back to working out too soon, and I got right back to pneumonia. So <coughs> this time around, they gave me seven days bed rest. I've already been on uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. This will be my fifth day of bed rest. I got two more. I'm taking it easy. So uh, there's no victory or glory right now because how can I have glory when I'm not back to my <coughs> myself? But I did want to make you guys some videos here, and I wanted to uh, tell you that um, the topic of today's video is the five secrets to picking up women no one's talking about. And before I go to the topic of the video, I want to share with you guys, man, that I think for men in general in Westernized culture, the ability to understand female nature and how to interact with women and how to attract and seduce women is like <coughs> one of the top skills you can have. So there's five skills you can have, dude. I think it's number five, dude. So I'm going to go over this because um, this is the five secrets to picking up women that no one's talking about. So when you do a when you do a search on YouTube or the internet, and just so you know, the internet, like or we call it Google and YouTube, are owned by the same companies, bro. So their algorithms or their backend database servers, whether it's SQL or Oracle, they're using the same tables, man, and keys and all that stuff, bro. Relations, relational databases. So <clears throat> when you do a search on the internet or or YouTube or Google or whatever whatever browser you're using. It's all got it's kind of all got the same garbage out there, dude. And when I say about garbage, bro, I think they're picking on ignorant young guys or social inept guys that don't really understand what it takes to attract, seduce, and to mate with women, bro. In our westernized culture and society, I'm not going to get into sexual market value and all that, and licks, money, and status, all that, because that's not what this video is about. There's thousands, literally hundreds of thousands of videos about that, and those aren't secrets. These are the five secrets to picking up women no one's talking about. <clears throat> so before I got to go take my medication because my cough's coming back up. I don't want to say these are any particular order, but these just came to my, you know, came to me as I was sitting here my, my first couple of days at home. I could be in the hospital for three weeks for macaroni, and I wanted to share this with you guys. So um, <clears throat> number one I got, is this is very important. Listen to this, guys. It's not about women. It's about you. So as early as you can, you got to decide what you want out of life, dude. That is the whole key to this game, dude. If you ask me, if it's like, if it's like, if I could rank these in order, which I don't think they're not, but to me, when I look at it, I think that's the number one thing, bro, is this. It's not about the women, it's about you. So the earlier you can determine what it is you want to be in life, and this is very important, guys, because, you know, as kids, you know, you ask the kid, what do you want to be? Oh, I want to be a rocket scientist. I want to be a fireman. I want to be a policeman. I want to be a doctor. I want to be whatever. That's just some little kid talking, and that's okay. But if you read the autobiographies of Michael Jordan, Arnold Schwarzenegger, or uh, <coughs> Mike Tyson, dude, Early on, dude, they knew what they wanted to be, dude. Early on, they knew. And uh, you even look at the King Richard story with the Serena Williams sisters, bro, or you even look at uh, 
Tiger Woods, bro. Early on, man, their parents had a particular vision for them that they inculcated because, dude, let me tell you something. The more you do of anything, the better you get. So the more you do, the better you get. That's what people don't understand. People are saying things are so competitive. I like what Will Smith said. It comes down to your work ethic, dude. If you can outwork the next dude. Yeah, genetics do play a role. And uh, <laughs> hereditary factors and giftedness and all that. <clears throat> but when you talk about the common man, dude, it comes down to your work ethic. Here's number two, guys. Learn what it means to be a man and become one. So let me go back to number one. This is very important because, dude, in this life, Nobody can live this life for you, not your parents, not your friends, not your siblings, not your whoever. That's why I said it's, it's better to decide early on. And I think if you can decide as early as 10 years old, I think that was the marker for Arnold, Mike, Michael Jordan, Mike Tyson at 10 years old. They knew they had a vision according to their stories. Then, dude, it, this is what I've learned. It takes 10 years to master something. You know, that's the average. Maybe you could do it quicker. Maybe some people are longer, but it's about 10 years if you like really apply yourself and immerse yourself. So let's say you're 10 years old and you decide, hey, man, I want to play in the NBA, bro. And let's take genetic factors out of it because when I was a kid, they had a dude named Spud Webb and they had another dude named Muggsy, whatever. And they were like five foot six, bro, in the NBA. And uh, Spud Webb won the slam dunk contest for years, bro. So I'm just saying it just comes down to your work ethic, dude. So if you decide whether you want to, you want to be in the NBA or a major league baseball, or a world champion boxer, or UFC, or you want to be a janitor, or a gamer, or a rapper, or a singer, or a dancer, <clears throat> decide what you want and commit to it and put the work in, dude. Because in this life, you get out of it what you put into it. So it doesn't matter what you decide to be, but just decide to be the best at it. That's all it is to me. In this life, people like winners and they like leaders. So if you're the best whatever, dude, like you could be the best chef, the best pooper scooper, the best whatever. If you're the best, dude, there is accolades, dude, and there is rewards for being the best at whatever. Number two is uh, learn what it means to be a man and become one. The reason I bring that up, guys, they got all this like red pill, blue pill, black pill, all this pill stuff, dude, from the Matrix, bro. And they got all this Alpha, Sigma, Beta, Delta, Omega, all this stuff. I think it comes down, dude, to just really researching what it is to be a man. What does it mean to be a man? What is masculinity? And this is what I do when I do my Google searches or I do any kind of research. I call it the power of five. Here's why. I get five different opinions, dude, very different opinions. And I look at what the common thread is between the five and I distill it down to the three, to what the core elements are. Because out of the five, one's going to be way out left field. Another one's just going to be too far-fetched. The other three are going to have a common thread. And I look at what that thread is and I apply that. Anything more than that, you get confused and get what's called paralysis by overanalysis. And I think a lot of young guys that are raised by single moms, dude, and then uh, this feminist society with the gynocentric um, agenda, dude, and the feminization of young boys and stuff, all this gender fluidity. Um, if you understand what it means to be a man, like what it means to really be a man, and you become that, you work to become that, dude, I think that's the number two thing you can do. That'll solve your problem with women because women like polarity. Femininity is attracted to masculinity. But if you're one of these dudes like, uh, what's that called? Metrosexual dudes, bro. It's just, you, you'd be confusing. You're confusing the women, bro. Number three, bro, is um, get your health in order and make it a number one priority. And that's why I couldn't rank these in order because, dude, all of this, if you just do any one of these things, dude, you're going to be all right. So I'm going to give you an example. And this is more toward younger guys, but it can apply to middle-aged guys and older guys. And I learned this being in the hospital with the macaroni, but your health is your greatest wealth. Like you hear that a lot. And when you're young, you take it for granted. And here's what I mean by you take it for granted. Dude, you, you're able to ambulate and run and move and your flexibility and your resilience, bro. And you just take it for granted because you're young and you're vibrant. But here's the whole thing, what I mean by taking it for granted. You should be applying yourself to sports. And here's why. It's not the PM. 
maybe you don't want to be in the NBA or, in a, or a Major League Baseball or the Hockey League or, you know, none of that stuff. You don't want to be a great soccer player or the NFL. I got it. But when you play sports, it allows you to push your body physically, which helps with your mental clarity, dude, your psychological health, bro, and your development, dude, your cardiovascular system, your coordination, and it helps with your confidence. Like if you if you play a lot of sports, you walk differently than a dude that just plays games. And playing sports leads you to a healthier lifestyle, eating healthy, bro, understanding nutrition, working out. You know, the importance of just being like, you know, an optimum, an optimum machine. I think that's so important. And it teaches you social skills as well. It teaches you the power of a team or a group. Um, number four, dude, this is like, <laughs> this is like the key to my heart right here is uh, learn how to defend yourself, become very good at it. And a lot of guys get this confused when I talk to them on my coaching calls. They'll be like, oh, would you serve back? I'm going to the gym. I'm doing calisthenics, like you said, and bodyweight exercise. I'm lifting weights, and I'm running, and I'm riding bikes. It's like, that's all good, baby. Oh, and then I play <laughs> play for a basketball league, dude. Okay, so what are you doing for self-defense? Oh, man, I'm fit. I don't need self-defense. Nah, man, see, when you work out and you're healthy and you play sports, that gives you one level of confidence. But dude, when you do self-defense and you become very good at it, whether you take up boxing or me right now, my passion is Muay Thai and Jeet Kune Do and Krav Maga. <laughs> and you take that up and you, or kickboxing, you get really, really good at it like you do it every day like me. It gives you a level of confidence and self-efficacy that translates to the way that you talk to people and you traverse to the world like the way you carry yourself, man. That's why I said become very good at it because there's a lot of guys on my Patreon. I know they just don't want my martial arts videos because they know I'm a, I'm a griller when I talk to them on our Patreon or on our coaching calls. So they just do it enough. Just, you know, it's just like when I go to the dojo, there's three types of dudes. There's the one dude who only does martial arts when he comes to the dojo. And I think it's good he's going to the dojo. I think that's good. Or he only, he only boxes when he goes to the gym. Then there's a dude that, you know, he boxes when he goes to the gym, but then at home, he's shadow boxing, dude. He's jumping rope, dude. He's working out, dude. He's doing combinations, dude. You know what I mean? And then there's a dude like me, like, who that's you just live it. You just live it all day, every day. Like, dude, when I'm not making YouTube videos and I'm not training clients, dude, or reading books, all I do is martial arts from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed. I got different people that I train with. I train at different dojos, different times of day. I just like the the flexibility of it and it keeps me prevents me from getting arthritis and keeps me pliable. And then here's number five. Learn how to become your own boss through multiple streams of income. And like I said to me guys, you know, all of these are very important standing on their own, but together dude is a winning combination. Here's why. And I see a lot of guys are guilty of this. They have a job. And it might even be, be a good paying job. <laughs> but this is what I learned from, a, from a, several of my multi-millionaire friends. You got to have multiple streams of income. Here's how it works. Even if you have a high paying job, a good job, bro, you should start your own business. Whatever your entrepreneurial idea is, a lot of the easiest ways to do is to start a business based off of what your job is. Like, so just say you're a janitor. You can start your own janitor cleaning service as long as it's not like, like a conflict of interest clause with your company. Or you can differentiate in a way where you're not competing with your current employer. But you already know what you're doing at your job, so you just take that expertise there, you apply it to your business, and then as you become sexual, you can, pick, you can cut ties with your job, you know what I mean? Or you can do like me. When I was an IT guy, I loved to do martial arts, so what I did was I took my IT expertise applied it to martial arts, you know what I mean? So I just made sure they had accounting software in the office and I kept track of who's got their memberships and where they are as far as their belts and their ranks and different things. But I, I did my hobby and I turned it to a business. I think that's very important because then you learn how to manage people, how to become a leader of men and how to be a motivator. And I think if you do all of these together, dude, you'll have 99 problems, but the getting a woman won't be one. 